Let's get to the news of the day, which is the fact that Tua Tungabaloa is going to return to practice this week on Wednesday, and he is on schedule to return to the field and play this weekend against the Cardinals following going on injured reserve in concussion protocol. Listen to what he had to say just a little bit earlier this afternoon. So how much risk do you think you're taking to play again? Any more than the normal play? Well, how much risk do we take when we get up in the morning to go to go uh, drive, drive to work, uh, get into a car crash, maybe, I don't know. Everything I think takes risk. So to answer that question, every time we all suit up, we're all taking a risk that we could potentially get hurt, whether it's a concussion, a broken bone, anything. You get up off of the bed the wrong way, you potentially could risk you spraining your ankle. I'm, there's there's just risk in any, any and everything. And I'm willing to play the odds. That's it. I appreciate your concern. I really do. Um, I love this game, and I love it to the death of me. That's it. Uh, he also said that he's been symptom-free since the day after he sustained his latest concussion. What did you make of not just the fact that he might return, but kind of uh, the way he handled the press conference today? Oh, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, it's really hard for people from the outside to put your, you know, put your mind or your body in the shoes of a National Football League player. Uh, this is something that Tua has been doing since he would probably could walk has been his dream was to play in the NFL and then potentially you see that dream potentially shattered due to injury and you do not want to relinquish that that dream at no matter at whatever cost and you even hear him saying that like it's in my blood it's still it's everything I do until I die that being said I get the criticism I totally understand like and I, I've had a lot of conversations with former players I think all of us are on the same page that, hey, it's to his body. He's got the clearance. Let him decide what he wants to do. But I will say, for the majority of the guys that have the conversations, like, take the money and run. Like, there are better things to do in life. Start a business. Get into coaching. Do something around the sport. Get into broadcasting. Whatever you want to do, you can do. But I'm not going to criticize him. Clearly, like you said, Chris, like, he's been symptom-free. Like, obviously, he feels good, and he feels healthy, or else I don't think he would be here. I think he's talked to, you know, multiple doctors, I would assume, that have said, you know, Know what here are the risks here's what happens what's what's interesting is about the impact this has on the Miami Dolphins I was with Zach Thomas last night former uh, NFL uh, Dolphins Hall of Famer former linebacker and we were talking exactly like we're talking like what do you think about Tua coming back but the biggest thing that we took away was how different that offense looks and how specific Tua is to what Mike McDaniels wants to do there's a lot of verbiage there's a lot of motion there's a lot of timing and it takes an incredibly accurate quarterback to execute that offense the way they want to and clearly we've seen a massive drop off in quarterback play so if you're a Dolphins fan you're pumped to have Tua come back but I do think it's going to be very interesting to see how Mike McDaniel calls games for the Dolphins. Does he call them differently to try to keep his quarterback protected, which is really hard. You're almost calling plays with an arm time behind your back. Is the full offense at your disposal? Or are you being a little bit cautious? And I would definitely lean towards he's probably going to be somewhat cautious. Right now, the Dolphins are two and four. Of course, the Bills running away with the division right now, but still plenty of football left to be played. Let's go from some uh, good quarterback injury news to some not so good quarterback injury news, and that is Deshaun Watson is done for the season with an Achilles injury. Mixed reaction from the fans when he went down, but what is your reaction to this news? First of all, the fans, the, the reaction was ludicrous. Like, I mean, for, I mean, those are the same fans, I guarantee you, the same ones were cheering him when he signs and he wins a game with the Cleveland Browns just because he's playing bad. All of a sudden, they bring up the skeletons in his closet, which are serious, and you don't want to diminish that, but to, to have that sort of chanting and, and booing him while he's coming off the field when he's just suffered a, you know, uh, season-ending injury is just it's, it's classless for the, the Browns fans to do that. As far as it pertains to the Cleveland Browns, this is devastating, clearly, for a player that they committed one of the worst contracts in the history of the NFL, one of the worst trades that's ever been made, and we're talking about Deshaun Watson. The money, I was astounded at some of the cap hit that they're going to take $72.9 million against the cap in 25, to the same exact number, 72.9 in 26. Um, and then another $26 million kicker goes in there if you trade or cut them. They are, they are stuck with Deshaun Watson, whether they like it or not. So good luck. You know, I mean, we have not seen the, the player that we saw who was an MVP candidate his best year with the Texans. And clearly that's one of the reasons they brought him in here and paid him this contract. 
but he has been a fraction of that player that we saw in Houston. And, you know, they're obviously going to try to get him healthy, see if they can resurrect his career. But as of now, it looks like the Browns are in a really tough spot for the next three to four years.